All right, here we are back in the lab. Now today, I want to talk about how airplane and drone propellers work. Now before I get started, I want to talk about the apparatus I've got put together to help me with my drone experiments. Now, I got a little wooden frame clamped together, and I have two parallel strings which serve as guidelines for my drone. Now I can hover my drone a little bit easier uh, because in these tight confined areas, the drone can get a little bit squirrely as it flies, so it kind of constrains it so I don't lose control. So let's go ahead and take a look at a video of my drone flying in this restraint apparatus. Okay, it looks like my restraint system works pretty well. So now let's go ahead and look at the basic physics associated with how propellers produce thrust. A propeller imparts velocity to the air to create a force. Now engineers refer to the disc swept out by the propeller as being the actuator disc. Above the actuator disc, the flow of velocity is essentially zero. The propeller imparts velocity to the air and creates a high velocity flow on the bottom side of the propeller. Now recall that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Now the propeller imparts velocity to the air and the air has mass, so the propeller is imparting momentum to the airflow. And the units of momentum are kilograms times meters per second. Now here's the actuator disc. On top, there's low momentum quite possibly zero. The air is not moving at all. The airflow moves across the actuator disc and picks up momentum. So in the bottom of the actuator disc is a high momentum. Okay, so now let's try to get an idea of what's happening to the airflow above the propeller and below the propeller. Now, since air is invisible, I can't actually show you what's going on with the airflow. But what I've done is devise a little system of a propeller on a stick and I can put it above and below the actuator disc to see how the air is moving. It gives me an idea of whether a flow is fast or slow or not moving at all. Now, it's this momentum change that creates the thrust that is generated by the propeller. So let's go ahead and take a look at the simple equation that governs this. Now the force generated by propeller is a function of the change in momentum divided by the change in time. In equation form, we have force is equal to change in momentum divided by change in time. Now engineers use P to denote momentum. So we get dP, which is a change in momentum, divided by dt the change in time. Now for those of you who are a little familiar with calculus, this ratio represents a derivative. Now let's make a quick check of the units to see if this equation makes sense. First of all, recall that momentum is mass times velocity. So we have our force equation, which is dp over dt. We substitute in mv for the momentum p. So we have dmv divided by dt. We input units, we have kilograms times meters per second in the numerator, seconds in the denominator. And if we do that math, we get force units of newtons in the end. So we do get force units, and so the change in momentum over the change in time is force. Now the change in momentum is the change in momentum as the air flows through the actuator disc. 
So this happens over a very short distance. Now the change in time is the time over which this momentum change takes place. Now since the actuator disk is very thin, this is a very short time period. So it's very difficult to actually measure. So now, why does the drone move upwards? Well, here's our actuator disk. We're imparting momentum to the gas flow, moving it downward, essentially creating a downward force. And Newton's third law of motion states, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if there's a downward force, there's gonna be an equivalent upward force, equal and opposite. And it's this upward force that makes the drone move upwards. So here's our drone. Here's our upward thrust. We impart momentum to the flow. And sure enough, the drone goes upwards. So what do you think will happen if I impart that momentum back into the system? Well, I can devise a simple experiment to check this out. So let's take a look at a simple animation of the experiment we'll conduct. Here's my drone. What I want to do is attach a reaction plate to the drone's landing gear. Now, here are a couple pictures of the actual reaction plate attached to my drone. Now, let's take a look at the reaction plate. To have a valid experiment, I need to make sure the drone can lift the mass of the reaction plate. Now, if the reaction plate's too heavy and the drone can't lift it, then we won't know for sure that the experimental results are actually due to the momentum exchange going on. Here's my reaction plate. It's made out of corrugated cardboard. I have a number of cutouts in it to try to make it as lightweight as possible. Then I'm using poster board to cover up those holes to give it a nice solid configuration. Then what I'll do is I'll attach my drone to it and then we'll do our experiments. Okay, since my drone is not that powerful, I'm a little afraid that my reaction plate will be too heavy. So what I want to do is make a measurement on the mass and then do an experiment to see if my drone can pick that up. So first I want to put my reaction plate on the scale here and I see I'm about 38 or 40 grams. So now what I want to do is find some objects and come up with roughly the same weight. I've got a large washer and five pennies and that looks like that's giving me about 40 grams. So now what I want to do is hang those weights off my drone and try to see if I can lift it off the table and see if it can support that weight. Now here are the test weights attached to the bottom of the drone. Now let's see if we can get it off the ground. Now I have my reaction plate attached to the drone. You can see it attached. Just have it twist tied to the landing gear of the uh, drone. Now let's see if it can lift off. All right, so now we've done what we can to make sure we have a valid experiment. So let's take a look and see what happens to the drone when we try to fly it with the reaction plate attached. Okay, so now let's see if it'll hover with the reaction plate on. Full throttle. Now that was an interesting result. So let's try to see if we can figure out what's going on. Let's go back to my graphic to see what's going on. Here I have my drone and the propellers are imparting momentum to the airflow. The airflow is moving downwards and it's striking the reaction plate. So that momentum is being transferred directly back into the drone system itself. So what's happening? Well, we've got the upward force being generated by the propeller system. We also have a downward force of the momentum transferring back into the reaction plate and into the drone. So those forces are equal and opposite. And thus the net force acting on the drone is zero. Now Newton says if there's no net external force acting on a body, that body's motion will not change. So if the drone's sitting on the ground, not moving, 
And if the upward force is equal and opposite, exactly the downward force, then the drone will not move. And that's exactly what happened. Try to sum things up. Now, propeller produces thrust by imparting momentum to the air. Now, that downward momentum creates an upward thrust, as per Newton's law, saying for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now, the reaction plate hopefully reinforced the concept of this exchange of momentum, and that's how thrust is generated by a propeller. Well, that wraps it up for this experiment. Thanks for joining me here in the lab. Now, hopefully you found these experiments interesting and maybe learned a little bit more about how propellers produce thrust. Well, I hope you see you next time here at Lab Rat Scientific.